Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Leia. Thank you guys so much for being here. Now, this is some type of makeup video. It's not a full tutorial. Let's be honest, makeup doesn't really do well on my channel. I'm not a beauty vlogger by any means, but beauty has been my passion for so long. Actually, when I started brainstorming ideas of wanting a YouTube channel, I'm like, I either wanna be a Disney vlogger, I wanna be a beauty vlogger, because those were always my passion. But somehow Flight Attendant just took off. I guess it's like an interesting topic, which it is. The lifestyle is very interesting. But today, randomly, I'm like, you know what? I haven't done an updated, like, how I do my makeup when I go to work. So that is what we are going to do today. If you'd like to see that, please continue to watch. But before we get started, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate you guys being here for future videos. I'm going to try not to make this video very long, but I always say that. But again, I'm a rambler. So again, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started okay so to start I already prepped my skin I have all my skincare on I do have eye cream a serum a face cream I also have SPF on I do this all the time I usually take care of that in my bathroom let's be honest the biggest issues I have when I'm flying is, is your skin and how your base looks dryness because the air on the aircraft is very, very dry. And after a while, you tend to feel very tight. So hydration is very key for me. Also, masks, they're optional. Again, you know, you don't have to wear them, but I do wear them sometimes in the cabins. It's really hard to keep makeup on with a mask. So those are two things that I've always struggled with. I feel my routine now is the best I've been able to get it. It's kind of like, think about when you, as a female, wear makeup and you wear sunglasses, you always get those indentations right here on your nose. Okay, it's very much the same thing with a mask. So I always somehow, the nose rubs off and then like the sides of the cheeks. For primer, I've been using this Milk Makeup. I'm actually getting to the very bottom of it. I do have another one, but I'm trying to use like the very last of it. This is a gripping primer and this is literally the best that I have found so far that just makes the foundation like stick to it really well, hence why it's called a gripping primer. I mainly focus it like on my T-zone, my nose, my chin, like kind of like right here. That's kind of what I do. And then for foundation, I do wear foundation when I fly. Some people wear CC cream, some people wear nothing, which I never advise people to like wear nothing. I feel like we work in a very public place where you're interacting with a lot of people and I think it's nice to look nice, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people think differently, but I love something more of a natural finish. I don't like anything too matte and if it is matte, it has to be like a demi matte. I love Estee Lauder Double Wear, but for some reason when I fly, it's almost too drying because it is more of a matte foundation. These are gonna be my two recommendations while flying. The L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear and also the Lancome Teint, Teint Idole, I don't even know how to say this, Idole Ultra 24 Hour Makeup. So literally these two are what I wear. When I fly, I'm shade 455 in the L'Oreal, and in Lancome, I am 270 Bisque Warm. I'm assuming that's what the W means. So this is actually a very expensive foundation, so most of the time this is what I'm wearing because I don't like traveling with very expensive makeup, and I like to save it for nicer occasions. But what I've been doing lately... Oh, actually, I wanted to show you guys my makeup bag. So this is what I take with me on my trips. It has you know, all my makeup, and in this compartment it has all my brushes, and then I have my lipsticks and stuff in this little pouch. So that's what I take with me. It is actually a lot, guys. I'm a glam girl, I've always been a glam girl. Now what I have been doing is using a brush lately. This is a Real Techniques 200. I go between a brush and a beauty sponge. I do use the e.l.f. one, the one that has like the angled. I used to buy beauty blenders all the time, but I don't buy them anymore just because they're they're kind of expensive, honestly. They're like 20 bucks, and these are like two for six or seven, and I find like these do a way better job. So I pump like two pumps on here, and then I just kind of like go into my face, honestly. 
I've always used beauty sponges more than brushes because I feel like I get way too many streaks with brushes. However, this one doesn't really leave streaks. I find that I get a really nice flawless application with this brush. At the end, I do kind of pat it with the sponge just to kind of like, you know, make everything blend even better. But this is pretty much what I do to start after my primer. I put in my foundation. And again, I like natural foundations. I don't feel tight. I don't feel like heavy caked up, I guess. Sometimes matte foundations can make you feel extra cakey. I don't feel that, but I do feel put together and beautiful. This is a really, really nice foundation. Honestly, sometimes I feel like this foundation even beats out a lot of high-end foundations. And I think it's like $11.99 from the drugstore. So I took another little pump and I'm literally just gonna put it on blemishes. I get a lot of like hormonal acne, it's hard to say that word, along my jaw. Sometimes I put extra coverage literally right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out and we will move on. I always kind of like take it up here a little bit in my ear and I always bring it down to like my neck and just blend it into like my, you know, my neck. You have to bring it down to match your face color and your neck color. I'm getting a really nasty pimple right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's starting to grow, but I'm not one that I like to pop pimples, honestly. I will pop them when they become a whitehead and then even that I'll use like a Q-tip. I never use my fingers. So at this stage, I'm gonna get my sponge and then I'm literally just gonna like dab just to make sure everything is seamlessly blended out. And then we will go in with concealer, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna say for the past three years, I've only been using the e.l.f. Hydrating, e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. It is a satin finish and I've been using the Tarte Shape Tape. This is kind of what I travel with because again, I don't really travel with a lot of my high-end makeup and I pretty much just like draw like I'm going into battle. <laughs> if you guys are female, I'm sure you, or male, I mean males wear makeup too, but I pretty much do what most people do, honestly, how people have been doing their makeup for a while. Let me blend that out up top. I pretty much focus it on like my T-zone my under eyes, and then like around my nose and mouth. Like I stated, the trick to flawless makeup and face when flying is literally your base. It has nothing to do with your blush, your bronzer, your lashes. I mean, that all makes you look glam, but you need a good base. So as long as you do a good base, your makeup will last you a very, very long time and it'll look great. So I'm gonna start blending this out. Okay, so this shade, I didn't even say, this is light peach, but if you guys have ever used this concealer, the shade range is all over the place. I have used light peach, um, medium peach, light sand, medium sand. Honestly, find one that you think is gonna work for you and most likely it'll work for you because I've had so many of them. Like this one is light sand, it's in my bag and this one's light peach. I finished two of them that I had and I think those were the medium sand, medium peach, but literally I didn't think they were any darker. If anything, they were just more yellow in tone. I tend to pull more like yellow olive neutral for some reason. Like I'm warm, but not like warm, warm. I'm more of like a neutral warm and I always gravitate towards anything that's like light medium. Those are always the shade range that I stick to. So I'm pretty much just doing the same thing that I did with the foundation, using this brush, blending it out as best as I can. Sometimes I even take another concealer to kind of put more coverage on these blemishes. So this is a NARS concealer. It's medium one custard. This is the concealer. It's the one in the pot. So I definitely don't wanna use too light of a concealer because I'm not trying to highlight, I'm trying to conceal. So I use more of a like skin tone concealer. So like this is a blemish. A lot of times I'll just hit like my blemishes or areas where I have like discoloration. So like this right here is a really insecure spot on my face for me because I have a lot of like acne scarring right here. 
When I was younger, I had a lot of acne when I was in high school, only right here. Isn't it that the craziest thing? I only got acne in this little circle, nowhere else on my face. So I do have a lot of acne scarring right here. And I can see it a lot. It bothers me, but there's nothing that I can do about it except to conceal. So that's what I do sometimes. Not all the time, honestly. I feel like that's very extra. But if you really want that flawless like application, I will go ahead and put an extra layer around just those problematic areas. And then again, when I feel like everything is blended out, I'll go over again with a sponge to make sure it is fully blended. There's no harsh lines and everything is soaked into the skin and I'm pretty much just like pressing it in. I'm not like swiping, I'm pressing. Okay, now that I have my liquids down, I'm gonna go ahead and set with the powder. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I've been using this for such a long time. It's such a good powder. And I got these little um, like powder puffs on Amazon. They come in a big pack. And I've been using this over the sponge lately and I've been actually really, really liking it. So I get a you know good amount and I'm literally just like pressing it again into the skin around like my eyes, like everywhere you would, I guess, bake. I know a lot of people do not bake anymore, but I'm being honest, I've always kind of baked. It works for me. I don't really stick to trends. I know right now is like less is more amazing, gorgeous skin, but I've always done what I've always done and it works for me. <laughs> so I just stick with it. So I pretty much like set my T-zone, my nose, especially again, if you're gonna wear a mask, your nose is definitely somewhere you wanna hit and press, 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 whatever's left over. I don't really bake very, very long. I put it on, I let it sit for a little bit, and then this is my Infallible Fresh uh, Wear. Again, it's the shade, well, this one's a shade 120 vanilla, and I'm gonna take this Morphe E41 Big Powder Brush, and I'm literally just gonna press this into like my cheek area. Everywhere else I did not put that translucent powder, and then I start dusting away the translucent powder as well. Okay, so that is pretty much my base. Honestly, it is a great flawless application base, but now I'm gonna be bringing my face to life. I definitely look very ghostly, I have no color. I'm gonna do everything off camera. I'm gonna do my bronzer, my blush, my highlight, my brows, my eyes. I will list everything in the description box of what I use. It's always changing because I change out my makeup every time I go to work. I change out my blushes, my bronzers, my highlights, my lipsticks, everything. And I will come back to finish and wrap up this video. Okay guys, so I am back. What a huge change, right? I have color in my face. I feel alive. And it's crazy how that works because my personality just, just came to life. I literally before this was like dead. I don't know, it's that whole thing like, you look good, you feel good, you feel me type thing, cause I'm totally like that kind of a person. When I don't have makeup and when I like am in my cleaning clothes, I feel like, well, like whatever. But then as soon as I get done up, it's like you can conquer the world, I'm not even kidding. I wanted to now show you how I finish my makeup. Now everything is done, it's very, very simple. Okay, I knew automatically when I said that there was gonna be an issue. Okay, simple as in I use neutral colors. I always tend to go heavy on the blush, only because blush is the first thing to fade, honestly, so I'm always heavy on the blush. And I always put lashes on. Lashes just awaken the eyes. And yeah, this is kind of what I would wear on a normal everyday basis when I go to work. You know, watch my vlogs. <laughs> I'm usually pretty glammed. I like being glam. I've always been a glam girl. I will always be a glam girl in the future. But now we are gonna set it and forget it like the rotisserie chicken. Okay, so I have two really good setting sprays. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I've been using it forever but I recently got into the Charlotte Tilbury. It's called the Airbrush Flawless Spray. Now, lately I've been traveling with this one only because, let's be real, the size. This is a travel size. This one's full size. But I have to be completely honest, guys. This one, I still feel like it is my number one. For some reason, my makeup lasts really well. I don't know, I just really love the Urban Decay All Nighter. It's never done me wrong. It's a classic, true and true classic. 
And the last step of my makeup, sometimes I actually even do this before I do um, mascara and eyeliner because sometimes it'll make your like mascara run. But my mascara is pretty much dry at this point. I waited enough to let it dry. And I'm gonna do a generous layer of the setting spray and then let me get it. And then I have my fan ready. I travel with one in my tote bag and then I have one inside my vanity. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a generous layer and then I'm gonna fan myself off. So all the way around the face. I mean, look, you're like wet. And then I'm gonna fan myself off and let it dry. I also try not to like blink a lot because if I blink heavy, the mascara will transfer. So definitely like try to look up and then I'm trying to get the eyes to have the eyes dry fast because <laughs> again, I don't want the mascara to transfer. I have like decent under eye lashes. They're not super long. If you do have long eyelashes, I definitely suggest you doing this before. Okay guys, so that does end this video. Again, this is something that I wear every single day. The longevity of your makeup is all in your base. It's all how you prep your skin, your skincare, your primer, and then how you set it. You can change out, like I said, your bronzers, your blush, your highlight, but everything else, as long as you have a good foundation, a good base, you are good to go. It'll last you forever. This is pretty much what I wear all the time even when i'm very very glam the only thing i change out is i'll actually do like eyeshadow like when i go to work i literally just throw something in the crease and honestly i'll let you know what i throw in the crease it's my bronzer and my blush i literally mix them together and i throw them in the crease but if i'm trying to go a little bit more glam i definitely will use eyeshadow and do a whole like smoky eye or something like that but again, this is like my everyday. I'm either a zero or 100. There really is no in between. I'm either no makeup and sunscreen only, or I'm full glam. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I always appreciate you guys here. And um, yeah, hopefully this gets better soon. This is literally just um, my Peloton workout room. <laughs> And um, yeah, thank you guys for joining me again. I will list all the products in the description box. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.